subscribe to my channel. Welcome back to Bob Moss Nano Tanks. How's it going? Hope you all had a good weekend. Today I'm going to be continuing my plant care guide with cryptocorns. Now I'm going to preface this with the fact that there are a lot of types of cryptocorn. Personally, I just have Crypt Wenty Brown and Crypt Pygmia. There are tons of kinds. I'll toss the list up on the screen. I'm not going to list them. I don't even, I probably can't pronounce half of them. Fascinating. So some of these do require a little bit different. Some of them are, are a little touchier than other ones. The Wenty seem to be like the hardier types of crypts. Some of them are are touchier and will melt heavier on you. But crypts in general require the same type of care, the same substrate lighting and stuff like that. So we're just gonna be doing general cryptocorn care. Is it cryptocorn or crypto, cryptocorn? Bruh. Crypto, whatever. Cryptocorn. So in today's video, I'm obviously going to be going over just basic crypt care, the substrate, the water, the lighting conditions. I'm also going to be showing you how to trim your cryptocorn and how to propagate and replant it to get it to spread more because cryptocorn tends to grow like in one bush, but yeah, you can get it to spread. You'll see. No way. I swear, I'll, I'll get it in there. So guys, the real secret, if you want your crypts to do amazing, is subscribe to my channel and like the video. I swear, your crypts will just explode. So enough with this stupid intro, let's get to the tanks. Let's talk about cryptocorns, yeah. Crypt care, crypt care, taking care of your crypts. Where to start? I guess the best place to start with this is going to be the substrate. So crypts are all root feeders. They all need to be planted in the substrate. They can't just be placed uh, glued to a rock like Anubius or Java Moth, Java Ferns, not Java Moth. <laughs> you can't glue Java Moth. Good point, second throat punch. It's not a rhizome feeder like uh, Anubius and Java Fern. As I said, it's the root feeder. So with Crips, you don't necessarily need the planted substrates, the nutrient rich substrate, but it does help if you just compare my my dirted tank Crypt growth to my the sand Crypt growth, you can really tell. The Wenties don't seem to care, but the Pygmia, that's where you really can tell the difference. Yeah, yeah. Take a look at these two Pygmia in the meta dirted tank compared to all these Pygmia that are down here in the cull tank. And if you remember, I had them in the other cull tank and I pulled them out because they just weren't growing at all. In this case, the pygmia that I have is a little bit more nutrient demanding than the Wenty. But in general, your crypts, you can get away with just sand and root tabs. Speaking of, I need to pop some root tabs in some of these tanks. Like if you take a look at the Wenty Brown in the um, Green Jade Cull Tank, it's just sand with root tabs and it's doing amazing. Even actually, all, all my Wenty are doing amazing and it's just sand with root tabs. So in summary, substrate, they will benefit from a planted substrate or from like potting soil and dirt, but you can get away with inert substrate with root tabs as long as you're planting the plant into the substrate so that those roots can propagate and you know, allow the plant to root and grab hold and suck up all the nutrients from the tap. The principle is sound. So after substrate, we have lighting. lighting. The lighting requirements of crypts, it's gonna vary. Like I said, there's the fancier ones. Bruh. The fancier ones are gonna need a bit more intense light than the hardier, easier ones like the Wenty. But in general, they're all like a medium to high light plant. You're not gonna get away with low lighting for most crypts, but medium lighting is good. As long as long as it's in the right spectrum, the 65 to 7500 Kelvin, That's the PAR and LUX don't really matter so much. These aren't as light demanding as say like carpeting plants like dwarf hair grass, but they also need a bit more light than say moss. They're right in the middle. So if your Wenties are having a bit of stunted growth, if they're melting, if they're not if you're not having success, if they're not looking like this after a few months, take a look at your substrate, maybe add some root tabs and take a look at your lighting. You might need to get something a bit more intense. I am 99% sure. And a little, I guess like 0.2A is actually the temperature. So in the sanctuary cult tank, I actually run a nano heater to keep the tank around 23, 24, because if I don't, it drops down to like 16, 17 degrees Celsius. And when I first had the crypts in here, I noticed there's just heavy melt. They weren't growing compared to the, the other tanks that had the crypts and they were up in the twenties and the crypts were doing amazing. So crypts are a bit temperature sensitive. You can't have them in cold water tanks. So like, I don't know, what's a cold water fish? Uh, let's see. A uh, goldfish. <laughs> You're not gonna have crypts in your goldfish tank, but you could have crypts in say your beta tank. And obviously shrimp tanks should be above 20 degrees Celsius in my opinion. So they should do fine in all our shrimp tanks. 
but if it is if it is you know uh, lower around that 20 degrees celsius mark you may want to you may want to think twice about uh, getting cryptocorn for your tank because yeah, temperature sensitivity is actually an issue with these plants. If I was a mom, this would be kind of shocking. Next, I'm just going to touch quickly on the fertilization. So the substrate, they're a root feeder, like I said, the substrate is going to provide most of the nutrients for them. But if they're in an inert substrate, they can pull from the water column to an extent. So they do actually benefit from liquid fertilizers as well. Not as much as direct rhizome feeders like Anubius or the Java Fern, but if they have inert substrate and they're lacking in the nutrients, they are able to pull from the water column and survive. Nice. So, so yeah, if you if you don't have root tiles but you just have liquid ferts still use that it will help your cryptocorn stay alive changed my life so that's the basics on crypt care next let's get into planting trimming and propagating these plants so when you first get your cryptocorns in from whoever you purchase them from you want to split them up into as many little clumps as possible just one little stem and whatever and you want to plant them deep in the substrate because you want to give your crypts as as many chances as possible to take hold and grow and survive in the tank. The one issue, everyone mentions this, crypts, they suffer from, well, it's called crypt melt. They are a very sensitive plant when moving them from tank to tank. And especially like if I shipped it to you, at basically any distance, Ooh. that stress from the shipping is going to affect the plant. And when you put it in your tank, all the leaves are gonna drop off. Boo. There's also the fact that when you purchase crypts from a lot of sellers, they're grown either in vitro or immersed, and then you put them submerged into your tank. Oh, so no. all those leaves that were, they were immersed growth leaves, if you, know the difference between immersed and submerged growth. So I'm not going to go over all the details, the differences between immersed and submerged growth. That information is out there. Bruh. But just know that a lot of times when you buy it, it's grown above ground. And then when you put it into your tank, all those leaves, they're going to melt off. They're going to die. And the plant is going to regrow underwater leaves. So you get a uh, heavy crypt melt and yeah, it looks like your crypts are dying and you actually, you actually can lose a few. It will cost you your life. If you guys remember way back when I first started of the sanctuary tank i think i put in about five wenty browns and only two of them survived just the substrate the different conditions wasn't quite right for the crypts to survive the melting so you can lose some if you don't plant them properly so that's very very important split them up into small clumps plant them deep in the substrate make sure there's root tabs something like that uh what a lot of people do actually when they first plant them is they just clip off all those leaves so that they don't have the melt at all and then uh, basically you plant the the root base and then it automatically starts growing submerged growth rather than melting the immersed and wasting time with that so yeah you just have to be careful of crypt melt when you're first putting them in uh, you're gonna lose lose almost all the leaves off your crypts and there's a chance you lose the plant. Oh my gosh! Now let's fast forward a couple months. You've planted your crypts, they melted, they regrew. You have some surviving like I do, but they're not spreading. They're just growing in these clumps. See, you see these clumps, you see this clump and this clump, they're just growing in clumps and it's kind of annoying. You want them to spread. You want your tank to be filled with crypts. Here's how you propagate. Yeah, First thing first, if you have shrimp or fish in the tank, you're gonna wanna just dose a bit of prime because we're gonna be playing with the substrate so bad things can happen, you get bad bacteria, bad, yeah. You wanna dose prime before you start messing with the substrate. Put it in! And then honestly, it's pretty simple. Nope. These ones are pretty big, so the roots are going to be deeper than what I have uh, played with in the past. <laughs> but with just a bit of work, little shimmy shimmy. Oh, that's hot. Little doo doo doo, you can get them out. That's hot. Ooh, baby. And then you can see, you can see how it's like starting to spread. Uh, I don't know how to <laughs> explain. There's all these different nodes. If you look, here's a node, a node, a node. And here's where you can clip it and plant them in different spots. So I'm just going to do that real quick. See, so you clip the different nodes. And then those are all now individual crypts that you can plant and spread throughout your tank. And if we go back a couple of videos, create that carpeting effect. Woo! So I'm just doing this with my pygmia. I like the way my wenty's going. I, I don't want the wenty filling the tank. I actually like the fact that it's one big clump. But the pygmia, I do want the pygmia to just fill this sanctuary tank. And then I want the Monte Carlo up here to fill the dirted tank. So 
I'm just, that's why I'm moving this stuff around. And then, yeah, when you plant it, you just put it deep in the substrate here. I mean to demonstrate. Because this is sand, I'm just gonna make sure I have root tabs in here. It's been a few months since uh, since I had root tabs, so making sure that they're fresh for the crypts I'm putting in. And yeah, that's that's propagation. It's actually pretty simple. The hardest part for me is pulling it out of the substrate without creating a huge mess. Because <laughs> I mean, this is luckily I just pulled it out of my dirted tank that's just filled with snails, so I don't have to worry too much. But yeah, if I if this was the shrimp tank, I would probably be doing a water change after this. I'll deal with you after class. Oh, and I totally forgot the minor point on trimming. Mm -hmm. So when you're trimming the crypts, what I do is I just go in and I find like the leaves at the bottom, they're not gonna be getting enough light, so they're gonna be dying off. If you have snails, they'll actually just eat them for you. You don't have to worry so much about trimming the, the plants. But if you don't have any snails, you're gonna wanna get rid of these leaves because they're gonna die off and release nitrate. So just clip them, clip them and take them out. It's pretty simple. You can cut some of the bigger leaves to thin it out. And it's just like any other plant, like a terrestrial plant when you, it's called topping. If you Google, if you Google search topping a plant, <laughs> if you clip or pinch off this little bit, it'll sprout like two from that spot. And it's a good way to thicken it up. Maybe if your Wente's not thick enough for your liking, you can clip some of these top leaves and they'll grow in thicker. But in general, I just clip off the, the bottom leaves that aren't getting enough light and it, it keeps the rest of the plant healthy and uh, growing up tall and filling in. Yeah. So I think I hit all the points there. Uh, that's cryptocorns in a nutshell. Oh, it's finally finished. If you made it this far, thank you so much. You're the best. Love you so much. Opening up applications for the secret comment this week. So this week's secret comment is going to be crypt my corns. <laughs> yeah, I know it's stupid, but whatever. I think it's funny. Dad jokes, yeah. So leave that comment below and I'll add you to my wonderful list. This is the end of the video club list. These are all the best people. They all comment all the time. And yeah, I love them all. I love you too, yeah, but if you don't comment, I don't love you as much. And if you made it this far, you really should subscribe to my channel, guys. Like 80% of you people that watch my videos don't subscribe to my channel. If you just did, I'd already be monetized. And I'd be making that sweet, sweet YouTube money. Oh, boo-hoo. Whole $3. So make sure to like the video. One like equals one crypt that won't melt when you plant it into a new tank. Subscribe to my channel, leave that comment below to, to become part of the club and keep your shrimp hands strong. Till next time, bye bye now. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Wait, what do I wanna do? Oh, hey there. Oh, hey there. If you're new here, this is Bob Moss Santa Tanks. If you're, I know I did that last week. No. Hey, me. Hi. So in today's video, I'm gonna be going over obviously crypt care, crypt propagation. I'm also going to be showing you how to propagate your... So if you want your crypts to flourish and survive, yeah. Uh, oh God, that was gross. So I think I, yeah, okay. Okay. I guess it's just an audio thing, so I can... 15 minutes? Fancier ones are gonna need a bit higher light than the hardier. Um, fancier ones are gonna need, motherfucker. These aren't as, these aren't as, um, mother f shit. If they have the new, under, blah, 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 blah. So when you first get these plants from whatever supplier you purchase from, I actually got, mother shit. So when you first purchase these plants from the supplier that you, mother, god damn it. They just, they pull oxygen differently. If you know, Motherfucker. So I'll just, I'll just start that over. Oh my God, what the fuck was I saying? The hardest part to me is pulling it out of the substrate with substrate. Did I say that right? Fuck off. You stupid fuck. Fuck off. What the fuck? <laughs> oh, good timing. <laughs> oh, that's gross. Yeah, I'm right in line with Gigaga. Gigu. Gaga. I think that's good.